Let's talk some wide receivers here. Uh, JSN. I, I had to throw Jackson Smith and Jigba on this one, Nate, because I, I want you to heat check me on this because um, I, I really am very excited about what we've seen from JSN. Kind of mentioned it to you a, a little bit yesterday yep. that I feel the usage for him has been more intentional. I like the way that he and DK Metcalf coming out of the bye were working off of routes together that felt more like these things were in play with each other. Uh, so I know you kind of liked a little bit more of what you, you've been I would say maybe mixed on Ryan Grubb so far, but yeah. but I think we both felt good about what we saw coming out of the bye. So from JSN specifically, is he a guy that's in the circle of trust at this point? I, I yes. How that game was is has made me feel. God, I hope it's just not one game. They extrapolate all this, but I'm going to. Uh, is they were showing an effort to get him involved, JSN involved, and not just like hey, a whole bunch of short slot targets. No, they used him on screens, a really cool screen, the red zone that I, I, I really liked. Um, they used him on the outside where it was, uh, I talked about this yesterday on Football 301, but he was on ball running an intermediate route, uh, which I, you know, an inbreaker, which I think is encouraging that it's not just, oh, this is Mr. Five Yards. You're, we're not going to Wendell Robinson you, you know, just a bunch of yeah. five yard for you. Seriously, though, like that's why I was getting scared. I was like, you know, Jason isn't the most physically impressive guy. He's more of a steady Eddie. Does he just become this? four catches 46 yard guy you know you know six catches 52 yard guy but now i i see that they're trying to use him more in the intermediate role uh intermediate route role as opposed to just having dk do that so they're mixing up their routes a little bit more and but also just the in between football stuff you know the the blocking the extended plays um when gino was working outside the pocket jason jason's a very smart player and you can you can really feel that when you watch him but it was really encouraging to me when Gino, this is the lad McConkey Herbert argument, same thing. Gino breaks contain, his eyes went to JSN, but not DK or not Lockett and not the, well, uh, yeah, uh, no rounds. So that, that's encouraging to me. And, and, and uh, I was like, that's a no brown. Um, but I, I think, uh, no, I, I'm, I guess this is trust me, bro. I, I'm like pretty, I've never been the biggest JSN guy. I've always just thought he was a little bit limited. I thought he was slot only. So to see him winning from the outside, even if it's a couple times, seeing him getting used on screens and they're not little six yard screens. This is things that he took into an explosive play against a, a you know, four nineers defense that were a little lower on, but still a good defense. Um, just those little things. I thought uh, I said it yesterday. This was the best overall game I've seen JSN play as a pro. Um, and not just total and sheer yards, but it's encouraging to me that I, I saw some more in between stuff with the Seahawks. The offensive line getting better is better for JSN. Because then now Gino has more stuff to work from for the pocket. More of Jason's routes on third down become live. We just made, I just, I know I'm talking about sides of my mouth. Those five, six yard gains, a lot better on third and four <laughs> than third and 11. And we have to chuck it to DK because that's what, that's just the best play that we have. So it's a better offensive ecosystem is better for JSN as opposed to the other receivers because he is a guy that, will thrive in a better offense. I know that sounds I know this sounds stupid like everyone was, but his role is better in a good offense and it's more conducive for him because that's the type of player he is. So uh yeah, I don't know how to how to describe it. It's trust me, bro. But it's yeah, Jason is just an interesting player for me. I feel like I'm gonna be discussing him for the next like two years trying to figure him out. <laughs> I really liked JSN a lot coming into the into the draft. Like I thought he was he was not like a tier one prospect, you mm -hmm. know, the, what the, the guys that went this year uh, or anything yeah, yeah. like that, but yeah, blue, I, absolute I, blue chippers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. He's, <laughs> and I, same with like prospects like Olave and mm -hmm. Garrett Wilson and Drake London, like those guys, Jamar chase, obviously I think those guys are different breeds, but yep. that next tier for me, I thought he was the, in his class, he was the only guy in that tier. Like he was in a tier of his own in that class. And then it was the flowers is and the mm, Addison's and, yeah. and the Quentin Johnson's. Obviously that's a mess. I had downs in that tier too. So uh, like that, that's sort of the, the way I viewed him in his class. Like I thought he was kind of separate from those guys and he just has never really, he's been fine as I've always said, but he's never really stood out as a pro. Um, the last three games, uh, it's it's obviously the stats, but even the way they've used him too, like Colin so has said in the chat, like it's, it, it's not even um, that, he look uh, to me. I don't think he looks different, but he looks a lot more confident. And I think yeah. like this kind of comes back to that Jalen Polk conversation, where it's probably he's more confident in the way he's being used. He's been targeted on forty one percent of his routes against man coverage the last three weeks. His air yards per target is over twelve. And this was you mentioned Wandale Robinson, like that was where he was 
especially as a rookie. And like, that's not his game. He's not a fake receiver. I think he's a real deal route runner, especially against man coverage from the slot. And to me, if you're a slot receiver who can, obviously we want you to beat zone. We want you to settle in the middle and be, you know, a reliable target. But when you can really access that next ceiling, it's when you can beat man coverage as a slot receiver. And we can have confidence to put you outside, uh, you know, even if it's just 25, 35% of the game, you know, something like that. So, to me, I think that JSN has always been – this is what's like crazy about it. Is I thought he's always been capable of doing this. He just never has been asked. And I know what people say. It's like, oh, well, two of those three games, obviously, there's no DK Metcalf. But one, we saw it in this game with DK Metcalf. And two, like you know this, Nate. The NFL season is long, and you're, the Seattle Seahawks coaching staff doesn't come in and think like, we got to get – we got to – we gotta solve the JSN puzzle. No. They got a lot of their shit going on. Okay, <laughs> so so sometimes got a new center, a right tackle. They got a lot. Yeah, of their center points. retired in the middle of the damn year. All right, they got a lot of shit going on. Mike McDonald's rotating linebacker. He's got a whole thing. They're also just trying to put a program together. They're not immediately like, right? How do we make sure JSN thrives? But sometimes it takes things ha- like chaos a happening. Like DK misses, helps. yeah, or DK misses two games, and we're like. Well, we got to change things up. What if we did this? And then it works and they continue to do it. So sometimes like injuries can create opportunity and can create change for players. And I, I'm, I'm almost trying to abstain myself because clearly I'm like biased in this discussion. And so why is why I wanted to ask you, because I think you came in, you came in a little lower on JSN coming into the league, but uh, that's why I kind of think this is an interesting one. Cause I'm I'm glad you're at trust me, bro. Cause I almost, uh, to be fair, I almost want to say like no idea and and pass on it. But uh, I, I do like that. You're, you're in the trust me zone. Yeah. And talked about this plenty of times though, post by weeks changes are more indicative of anything else. Cause that's the coaching staff and everybody going like, okay, this is actually what we need to be doing um, for I was optimistic about Grub, and so I'm just I'm still giving the benefit of the doubt. And how that performance was on Sunday, and what the Seahawks did, I'm like still a little bit. I'm more bullish on them. I was starting to sell a lot of uh, personal mm. stock on that coaching staff. <laughs> just go, ah, eh, yeah, I don't know about Grub, yeah, but that game was very, very encouraging, and just how they use it, and just using it in smart ways. So that that's why I'm like I'm buying this because I think this is very real. And now I, I know I, I talk about receivers blocking, but him going against Demonador Lenore, who I think is a very good player, sprinted at him on a play. I tweeted this, and they just butted head. It's on the backside of a run. Jason could just give an iffy effort on that. I'd say whatever if I were coaching him. Big, oh yeah, you know, you're not at the point of attack. I get it. Jason brought the heat on it and was like and battled against Lenore, who was trying to battle against him. And I know it's just one play, and I'm extrapolating from that. That he's competing, and yeah. that means co- you're confident. Because you want to do well, and then you're going, if I give effort on this, and you know what happened on the next play? They gave him a jet sweep. Yep. If you don't block, no reward. If you block, you get the rock, and you can see that confidence build. So, yeah, I I think the arrow is pointing up, not only just for him, but really a lot of the Seahawks, and it's pretty cool to see. Let's talk Calvin Ridley here as our last wide receiver. Um, Just because you you mentioned in passing yesterday that Will Levis looked, I don't know if you wanted to say okay, um and, but Ridley there's there's some good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, maybe that was it. It wasn't it was just like there's actually a couple of positives to take yeah, away. I have to study it, but <laughs> but but you know what? Like at the end of the day, all we really need is Will Levis to be a functional NFL quarterback for Calvin Ridley to be useful in fantasy. And he's been beyond useful lately. He's actually been he has been somebody uh that has smashed in the last few weeks and he was someone that was completely unusable early in the season then they trade deandre hopkins and again not it's not even just been okay decent game since he's since week eight 143 yards on 15 targets 73 yards on eight targets 84 yards two touchdowns on nine targets and then uh, 58 yards on six targets this last game so but that's that's great that's your fantasy wide receiver three that's awesome stuff so um i'll tell you what i'm at like I'm a pass. I'm still very skeptical, but do you have any more faith than I do? Um, well, and then he had a, a, a long touchdown call back. Um, they had an True. illegal formation or something like that. No, I'm, I need to study the Titans a little bit more. It's just so hard when they had Mason Rudolph in there. And I, 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 I kind of don't like to study teams when it's just like, okay, they have a backup in there. And I know point, Levis isn't, yeah, Levis isn't, you know, some pro Bowl quarterback or anything, but still the starter or the de facto starter for them. Um, so like watching what they're trying to do, I mean, it's kind of like a, it's going to be the whole offense, but just because with Levis is going to be up and down and up, yeah. the ups are going to be super up 
it's going to be more chunk play, um, which can lead to some boom games, I, I think. So I don't know what I'm, I'm, where I feel. I think I'm more of just the no idea man because I literally am. Uh, but I do think it's just the who else they have, what they are trying to do with Levis and make his world a little bit easier and everything. Ridley's going to benefit from that. Yeah, but like you said, if he's your receiver two or a receiver three, like you're, I mean, that's not bad because I do think there's going to be some boom weeks uh, still to come. I just think also losing Hopkins cleans up Ridley's role uh, and be able to move him around, move him on ball, off ball, X, Z, all those types of things. Because Hopkins is kind of like in that offense is like, hey, you are here. <laughs> Everybody yeah. else work around you and orbit like you're the sun. And I, I think now that like Ridley's role has opened up. So I think the usage isn't going to go away. It's just whether Levis can hit them, <laughs> whether they can connect and whether that. I, but I do think there's a couple more boom weeks that are possible here Like, because this isn't going away. Like they're trying to make this happen. So I, I don't know if that's trust me, bro, or more of a no idea man with with, a, with, with maybe a small idea. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we got two games against the Jags. We've got the Colts. We've got the Bengals. Oh man, this might be a trust season. me like, all the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, you've got you've got me to no idea, man. But my initial instinct was like I'm a pass. So okay. we'll see. Um, no let, idea, man. Talk, feels feels good. <laughs> yeah, that feels about right.